Hi, so I'm the project officer for the Five Hair Streaks project, which is based in the Upper Thames region. And I'm here today with the branch chair for the Upper Thames, Nick Bowles. Hello. Hi. So, can you explain the significance of the Upper Thames region for the Five Hair Streak species? Well, we're really delighted that we've got all the UK hair streaks living in this area. Mm. Um, there are two other branches, at least three possibly, where they've got them all, but that's because people helped to introduce them there. Mm. But so we've they're, had they're them naturally occurring. Here. Always been here, as far as we know. We're the only area where they've always been, mm. and that's just to us. That's just something special. It is, and particularly because although our countryside around here is very pleasant, it isn't really very spectacular. We haven't got Cornish cliffs with crashing waves or miles of Caledonian forest. We've got what you might call normal English farmland. Mm. And it's so wonderful, therefore, that it's brilliant for these five hair streaks, which are species of butterfly that many people have never seen. Mm. They are quite special. And some of them are, are quite rare and elusive very. as well, aren't they? Yeah, so. I mean, not, they're, they're both rare in the sense that there aren't very many of them. Numerically, they're in low numbers. They're also really difficult to find because they spend so much time at the top of a tree and they're extremely good at not doing very much. Mm. So you can stand below the tree staring up for 25 minutes and see nothing and then eventually you'll see one just sort of walk about, mm. not even bothering to fly. So they're tricky to pin down, um, but for all that it makes them even more special to us because it's the fact that they're so elusive and then you feel such a pride when you've actually eventually managed to spot them. Yeah, excellent. It's not just the butterflies. We're looking to save all the wildlife that lives in these habitats. And we're as interested to save the plants and all the other insects and then the mammals and the birds that eat them as we are to save the butterflies. We're not, although our title is butterfly conservation, we're interested in a wider suite of things. You can't have butterflies in isolation. No. So we they, we do save the the environment, and as part yes. of that, it's the whole ecosystem, isn't it? So, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's all got to be there, and that's one of the things that's so obvious when people do try to mitigate for the damage they've done, and they plant a, a line of new plants, new trees, perhaps a new hedge. It takes years to develop to be back to what it was before that hedge was first grubbed out, yeah. and that's one of the things that we can achieve through our conservation work, our voluntary work, all the volunteers who come along can see that what they do is preserving something of beauty which is already there and enhancing it. Whereas if we just leave it, things slowly get worse and worse because all of our hair streak butterflies need a certain amount of intervention in the landscape. They need a certain amount of clearance and regrowth. Not massive scale like with the development of a new town and not just leaving things alone because then they become overgrown with plants that aren't necessarily conducive. So like other branches around the country, um, the Upper Thames branch has got um, several species champions for, yep. um, for lots of different butterflies, but for, for hair streaks. So we've got um, black hair streak, brown, white letter and green, is that correct? Yes, yep. that's right. We've um, got five species of hair streak in the area and four of them are sufficiently scarce or declining that we've we've given them a species champion, someone that goes, basically their, their job is to try and find out where they are at the moment so we can protect them against development and habitat destruction. And also to try and find out more about their life because although these species have been in Britain for so long, probably because they're so elusive, people aren't really sure what they need precisely to breed. So we know what their caterpillars eat. Um, I think when you were talking with Stuart Hodges, you were saying about well, this blackthorn in lots of places, how come the black hair streak is so rare? And we really don't know. Even after Stuart's 20 years of dedicated study, we still can't really answer why is that species so rare? What is it about some bits of blackthorn that makes that blackthorn absolutely perfect for the butterfly? And then another bit that to humans looks very similar apparently isn't any good at all. So we're studying for all the hair streaks in this area to try and work out precisely what it needs. It isn't just having the right caterpillar food plant, mm. much more complicated, which makes it more interesting and more frustrating. Yes, and I suppose that information as well can be shared as best practice for other Absolutely. branches as well. I mean, that's the idea. We're trying to find out to both help ourselves and the butterfly right across the country and Europe if we can. I mean, we do correspond with people in other places about what they're finding out and yeah, 
sharing the message obviously is a good idea. Mm. So if we're thinking about kind of specific threats for, for hair streaks and in particular this area, yeah. um, what are they? Well the biggest single problem we've got is just that the area where most of our hair streaks are based is scheduled for lots and lots of development because we're between Oxford and Cambridge and the government have declared that this should be a zone for massive growth mm. and they want to put lots of industry in here and they want to put lots of new housing and so we're seeing many many places which were once very good habitat being tidied up tidied away the hedges are being trimmed back roads are being built fields are disappearing under housing and light industry so it's biggest single problem in this area is that the countryside doesn't look very spectacular so it looks ideal putting new towns on top and then unfortunately the butterflies that lived there before have gone of course. So I suppose with with that development um, there could potentially be opportunities for habitat creation. Maybe. Absolutely and we're very pleased that most of the people who are involved in the really big projects are are willing to help us with that but the the problem is, once you put a town somewhere, even if you develop a nice bit to mitigate for the town you've built, at some remove, will the butterflies be able to find that place when you've taken down the habitat where they lived previously? Yes. And that's a problem we're finding, that people knock out the habitat where the butterfly is, then they build the new habitat to replace it, but in the meantime, where was the butterfly supposed to live? Can't get to it. Yeah. No. So it is about if you are going to um, maintain and create and enhance these things, it's all about connectivity as well, isn't Absolutely it? right. And we're delighted that more and more landowners are coming on board and thinking about improving the, the way that their hedges are managed to help the hair streaks, the way that their fields are managed with the field margin things to help the hair streaks, which is wonderful. But we, we do need, though, more people by far to come on board and help us with this and we, we can understand why people don't they've got busy lives and helping a little butterfly probably doesn't seem very important to them but to us it's immensely important. So looking for hair streaks is a, an all year round activity isn't it? It's not just the summer there's things that happen in the winter like egg searches can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah you're absolutely right that the butterfly season that is watching the adult butterflies begins in April with the green hair streak and that goes through May. And then in June, you've got the black hair streak, shortly followed by the white letter that perhaps late June, but more likely July and August. And in August, we've got the purple hair streak, followed towards the end of August and through September most years, we get the brown hair streak. So there's a whole summer of watching different adult butterflies fly. And then in the winter, something which so many people love to come along and get involved in is the activity we call winter egg searches. So it's not just about the butterflies though, is it? I mean, if people wanted to get involved, there's a big social aspect of it as well, isn't there? Of course, I mean, one of the things that people love is meeting up with others with shared interests and going out and doing something, having a nice chat while you're doing it and knowing at the end of the day, you've done something really worthwhile. So you haven't just walked around the shops talking to each other, you've been out and you've saved a species or a habitat. And isn't the New Year's Day brown hair streak oh, yes. search very popular, isn't it? It's it a is. a tradition. <laughs> yes, in fact, quite a lot of people who only go birding but see us at the RSPB's Otmore Reserve know that it's New Year's Day when they see all the brown hair streak egg searches out on New Year's Day. Yes, a great tradition within the Upper Thames. What a brilliant way to start the year. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So if a local landowner or land manager has got habitat that they might think is suitable for yep. the hair streak or they might have even seen a hair streak, then, then butterfly conservation can, can help them um, with some advice, can't they? Always keen to go and visit landowners, walk around with them, show them what they've got. Um, only last week I went out and showed someone a purple hair streak which must have been on their land for 40 or 50 years since they took on this bit of farmland and they'd never seen one because no one had stood and said you just look up there this is the right side of the tree to stand this is the right time of day oh look there's one yeah and they were delighted because it's on their land and they feel a, an ownership quite rightly yeah. they've looked after those oak trees and they've got the butterflies in them as a result as a, a general member of the public who perhaps um, hasn't got any experience with um, looking for butterflies let alone looking for these kind of very special and elusive butterflies where would they start how, how, how would they get involved well, um, getting in touch with our website's a good thing and you'll find whatever your interest or whatever you think your interest might be if you're not sure yet you'll find ways in and we do lots of free training courses we do lots of 
free field trips, we do lots of free conservation work parties, people don't have to pay. We want their interest and their enthusiasm, not so much their money. If they've got money, if they've got money and they want to give it to us, we don't refuse, but we're more interested in getting them helping us to save butterflies. It's getting people interested and then spreading the interest is the key thing. So anyone who wants to come along and get involved with us, we'd be delighted to see them. And there's all sorts of different routes in. It would take too long to explain them all. Wherever you are in the country, there will be at least one hair streak species somewhere not too far away from you. So head over to our website for more information where you can find details about local branches and what's happening in your area.